So it turns out when it comes to infinite sums, the only type now that we have, uh, the infinite sums that converge are geometric. So the other sums that we're going to look at, the other series that converge that have a finite sum, are all going to be finite number of terms. So the only infinite uh, series that has a finite sum that we will ever look at are these geometrics. And only if they're, let's see, the R value somewhere up here. There is no really restriction on R here. Well, there is one really bad R value. What R value would make this fail for sure? There is a single value of R that would be really bad. What would make this right side not make any sense? One. one. So it's not going to work if R is one. So I better write that down. Uh, this is the finite case. So you can still add together n r's if you want to. Oh, n r's, n ones. So if I add up one n times, you obviously get n. So if r happens to equal one in a finite sum, you can compute it really easily. Just count up how many times you're adding one to itself. When it comes to the infinite case, it's a very different story. There we go. Here's the infinite case right here. Uh, I talked while we were writing this down that if r is 1 or more, you're going to add up uh, things that are not getting smaller. So you get infinity in that case. So the infinite case, you need to make sure your r is small, less absolute value less than 1, or else it will not add. It will add to an infinite number. So the, all the other sums we're going to look at are going to be finite sums. <clears throat> so we're really only going to be concerned with finite sums for the rest of the uh, sums in this chapter. So let's write down some sums that are common. Actually, let's do some algebra. Yeah, let's look at some algebra of sums first. I use, I think, k's we were using for our indexing variable. It doesn't really matter what you start k at. Uh, these do require us to only have a finite number. So one thing you can do is factoring. So this is what factoring looks like. Uh, because I don't really care where k starts on these, it can really start ooh, anywhere. So I'm not going to write k equals 0 or k equals 1, because it could start at 0, 1, or even 20, or any, really any other number. So what we did right here, this is factoring. And in this case, we factored out constant c. So each term was multiplied by c. So we just said add up the terms and multiply by c at the end. So that's a factoring right there. Another cool algebra thing we can do, if you have ak plus bk, Actually, underneath, I'll write why this works. And I'll do that. I'll switch colors. I'll go to blue to, for the justification. So here we have CA0 plus CA1 plus dot, 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 CAN. And all we're doing is factoring the C out. So it's A0 plus A1 plus dot, 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 plus AN. So all we did right there was factor the C uh, out from being multiplied by every term to just add up the terms and multiply at the end. So the next identity or algebraic uh, property we're going to look at is rearrangement. And you can rearrange the terms into two separate sums. And 
equations. On the left, what we would have is A0 plus B0 plus A1 plus B1 plus An plus Bn. And all we did on the right side is basically put all the A's first and the B's second. Instead of going A, B, A, B, A, B, just line up all the A's. A0 plus A1 plus An plus B0 plus B1 plus Bn. So this is what we call rearrangement. And use the commutative property of addition, meaning you can switch the order of things you add together. So I think these are the only algebraic properties you really need for what we're going to do. So we're going to look at some common sums next. So we'll start with the easy sum. So in this first sum, we're going to add up this constant c. It's going to be the same number every time. And we're going to add it up n times. So what do you get if you add c to itself n times? We get n times c. And this just is c plus c plus lots more c's. You have n of those right there. So you add them together, you got n's, n times c. So that's our first common sum. So our next sum is going to be way less common, although very useful. No, don't go to infinity. That will be infinity. Stop at n. So here's our next sum. If you add up, <coughs> what this is is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n. If you add those together, you'll get n times n plus 1 over 2. There is no reason you should believe this right away, unlike the first one we looked at, which was, in my opinion, somewhat obvious. Add up the same number n times, you get n times that number. Uh, this next one is not obvious at all. And the way we're going to prove this next one is I want you to think about a staircase. And actually, we'll switch to graph paper so I can make this accurate. <coughs> so I'm going to draw a staircase. And it's increasing heights of blocks. So let's say there's an even number of blocks. So there's supposed to be n right here, we're adding up n blocks, and they keep increasing in height. So what we're going to do is cut this staircase in half, and then flip the staircase on top of itself. So it makes one rectangle. So we're going to just turn it over. So I'll redraw that. So we've got our one, two, three. Now we flip it over, we have to be very careful about the height. So I'll draw the I'll draw the four stair first. So the four stair is going to be above the one. Uh oh. No it won't. Four stair will be above the three. One, two, three, four. And then the five stair is above the two and the six stair is above the one. So all we did was flip it over. Now we get a rectangle, and it's pretty easy to calculate the area of a rectangle, width times height. The only question is, what's the width and what's the height? So what will the width have to be? 
So, well, so, so I drew n as 6, but let's pretend that we don't know that n was 6. So just relate the width back to n. So we cut it in half, so we get n over 2. Now the height's going to be a little more tricky. So our original height was n. What is our new height? How much bigger is the new height? It'll be n plus 1. So it's basically your tallest block was n is now sitting on top of the 1. So it's 1 taller than n. So the total area, or the amount of blocks total, will be n uh, plus 1 times n over 2. So that'll be the total amount of blocks here. And we can write that as n times n plus 1 oops, divided by 2. All right, so any questions on that right there? This works anytime n is even. You can evenly cut your staircase in half, and you get this situation. So what I'm going to do now is draw, draw this out as if n was odd. And we're going to see how we can do something that is very similar. So. I'll draw a height 7 staircase now. Now this one is more tricky. There is a way to cut this up and flip it over and get a rectangle. It won't work if I cut it right here. If you think about flipping it over, you'll have this extra block left over at the end. That's not good. What about cutting it here? Think about that and flip it over. So this is the way we're going to cut it and flip it. So let's redraw it. I'll have to draw it a little lower so I can fit this in the space that we have. <clears throat> so I'll draw my original three. And the four blocks, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The four block is going to flip on top of the three block. So there's a new four block. The five block is going to flip on top of the two. The six block on top of the one. Now the seven block makes its own entire column right there. So it's tall enough to go all the way to the bottom. So it looked like we were in trouble, but it's okay that seven block made an entire column. So good news is we still got a rectangle. We gotta be a little careful in the dimensions. Not quite the same as this not n over 2 the width is not n over 2 anymore so that's gonna be the tricky part let's do the height that's probably easier what is the height it will be 7 in this case is n so our heights the original height 7 it didn't pick up so the original height was n so it didn't get any taller or any shorter so our height is still n now we gotta be careful about the width so here n is odd so if you cut n in half, you'll have a, a fraction. You'll have something and a half, or something 0.5. So if I just cut it in half, I would have 3.5. So we've got to be a little bit careful. Can't just do n over 2. So in our case, n was 7. Our new width is going to be 4. What can I do with 7? to get 4. So we'll add 1. That comes from the fact that our width is going to get one block wider. So it'll be n plus 1 and then cut in half. That one's a little bit tricky to see. So we basically, we basically cut it in half, but you could say this is cutting in half rounding up. 
because in this case you would get 3.5, but we want to make, we are going to round it up. So we'll add one to it and then cut it in half. And so our total blocks is going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. And we can rewrite that as n times n plus 1 whole thing divided by 2. So good news is, no matter if even or odd, we got it covered. Same exact total number of blocks. And that is exactly the number somewhere back here that we had right there, n times n plus 1 over 2. All right, there is a uh, story that uh, I believe it was Gauss was told to add up the numbers from 1 to 100 when he was really young in elementary school, and he did it in something like 30 seconds. All right, you're going to do it in 30 seconds, the exact way he did it, except I told you how to do it. But that's all right. So tell me what the numbers sum from 1 to 100. Don't add them together. Use what we just looked at right there. So we're adding up k. k equals 1 to 100. That's how to rewrite it as a sum. And just use our formula right up there. And you should be able to tell me the sum really quickly. So you should get 50-50 as your sum. Way faster than adding them up by hand. So now we're going to use uh, the common sums that we just wrote down in addition to some algebra. And we're going to find some more complicated sums. So we just did an easy example. We're going to do. Uh, some examples that require you to do uh, to use both algebra and these sums here. And I'm pretty sure your uh, take home quiz has problems similar to this. Yeah, I want to make sure I don't exactly do one of these. So one thing you can always do is write out the first few terms if you're a little confused as to what you're looking at. So your first term will be 3 times 0, plus 3 times 1, plus 3 times 2, plus lots of more terms, 3 times 16. So it's usually easy to write out the terms. Does that first term contribute to the sum? Nope, 3 times 0 is 0. So why don't we just go ahead and start this at k equals 1 to 16, 3 to the k. So we can just pull that first term out. It was 0 anyways, so it's not going to affect anything. All right, algebraically, what can you do with a 3? Everything's times 3, so we're going to factor it out. What that looks like in some notation, summation notation, it looks like we're just moving the 3 on the other side of the sum. But we all know that that is factoring. All right, use those common sums and tell me what this adds up to. Don't add 16 numbers together. Use the formula that we just wrote down.
And let's not bother uh, computing the actual number because your calculator can do that pretty easily. So just leave it as some product like this. Web work will take that answer. I'll take that answer. If you don't divide by two correctly, I'll probably take a point off on your final exam or your quiz. So just leave that form. As soon as you got the sum out of there, so as soon as there's no more summation, you're done computing the sum. All right, there's our first example. We'll do another one. All right, so this next one is summation from 3 to 25 of k minus 3. So let's think of some algebra we can do. k minus 3. So there's really nothing to factor out, but we have this second case right here. So we have two things subtracted now. So it turns out if you're added, you can write it as a sum. If you're subtracting, you can write it as a difference. So it would be the sum of the first term minus the sum of the second terms. So we can write this summation of all the k's from k equals 3 to 25 minus sum of a bunch of 3's from k equals 3 to 25. So any questions about that, splitting it up? We're really just rearranging terms. So let's do the second sum is a little bit easier. So let's think about this sum right here. We're just adding up a bunch of threes. How many times are we adding three to itself? It's a little bit tricky. It's not 25. So let's think about it. You could use your fingers to count. <clears throat> so one thing we can do, 25 minus 3 is 22. That's really close to the number that we're adding together, the number of 3s. What did I say from before? It's going to be one more than this. Because you're when we do these sums, a little strange, we start at 3. So. Uh, you're starting at 3, so you really get one more than it looks like you're getting because you're using the first and the last number. So our total, we have uh, one more than this. So we have 23 terms total. So we're adding 23 threes together right here. There is another way to handle this. We could re-index. If you want to, we could subtract 3 from both of those and change this around. The good news is there's no k's on the inside, so there's nothing to change around on the inside. But we'll leave the indexes where they are. So we're going to add 3 to itself 23 times. So this is just 3 times 23, and of course we're subtracting this number. So we'll look at the first sum. I'm going to write the absolute wrong answer here. Why is that completely wrong to do 25 times 25 plus 1 over 2? So we've got to start at 1 if we're going to use this formula. So there's a few ways to do this. We could shift our index down. So let's go, let's do the shifting the index route. So the starting value was, should be 1. So what we're going to do is take k and shift it down by 2. That means instead of stopping at 25, we're going to stop at 23. What do I have to do to the k inside? So before k started at 3, now I want my first term to still be 3. So what do I need right here? So my first turn to be 3. 
So if I just go k, my first term will be 1. So I shift a k down by 2. I have to compensate and do a plus 2 right there. So we shifted the index down by 2, so we had to compensate and shift up by 2, or else we would mess up all of our terms. And now we need to re-split this up. Now we're starting at 1, ending at 23, so we're ready to use our formula for the first sum right there. So we're going to use that staircase formula, 23 times 24 over 2. What about the middle sum, adding up a bunch of 2s? How many 2s are we adding together? Uh-oh, something doesn't look good. Seems like we should be adding 24 of those. Oh no, we're adding 23. Never mind. So we have 2 times 23 minus 3 times 23. So let's factor out a 23. We're done right there at that step, but I'll go ahead and factor out a 23. 24 over 2 is 12 plus 2 minus 3. 23 times 11, whatever that number is. Any questions on splitting that one up? All right, so the last example we'll do is going to be a geometric. So this is a finite geometric, so I'll write that uh, finite geometric sum formula out. Why can I not just apply this right away? What are some problems we have? So we're not starting at the right spot. What is another issue? Even if So let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's shift down by 1. So we'll at least take care of the indexing issue. So we're going to stop now at n minus 1. So we're shifting k down by 1. Now I have to compensate. Before, when k was 1, our first term would have a negative 2 power. So if I'm going to drop k by 1, I have to compensate and add 1 to the k inside. So this will be 1 half to the k plus 1 minus 3. So that will just be to the k minus 2. So this is closer to looking like uh, 
the right form, what is the next problem we have? Oh, I wrote the formula down wrong. That should be an N up there. What is the next problem? The exponent, the exponent that minus 2 right there. So how do we deal with that minus 2? What algebra can I do with that exponent? So I can write it as 1 half to the k times 1 half to the negative 2. So I can write it as a product. So that's just the sum rule for powers. So if you have a sum or a difference of a power, you can write it as the uh, base to each of those powers multiplied together. And what is 1 half to the negative 2 power? Four. Regular 4. So that term right there is just a constant 4. And of course we can, so I'll write it as 4 times 1 half to the k. What can I do with the 4? What algebra can I do with that 4? So every term is multiplied by 4. So I get to factor that out. So this is 4 times the sum 1 half to the k, k equals 0, 2, n minus 1. And finally, we have it in the right form that I can use the geometric series sum at the top of the board. So it's going to be 4 times 1 minus, so r is 1 half, 1 half to the n divided by 1 minus 1 half. Now, if we knew what n was, we could plug in that value and actually compute this number. So if n was 20, we could figure out exactly what this number is. So we did a little re-indexing and a little algebra at the same time. Well, we did one and then the other, but that sometimes you have to do both of those moves to figure out what these sums are. So this is a good place to end on sums.